Nothing makes me feel more sorry for my sins than chopping people up with a two-handed chainsaw. Hello and welcome back to Allspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about making the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Today we'll be continuing in our look at the units from the new Sisters of Battle Codex, with a focused look at the Sisters Repentia and the Repentia Superior. In the video we'll take a look at both of their data sheets, any way that we can get more out of them on the battlefield, and how I would run them in a competitive Sisters of Battle list. In the background, the Sisters Repentia are Sisters who have fallen from grace within the very strict religious codes of their respective orders. Thus disgraced, they fight to regain the Emperor's favour through a glorious death in battle. Though outcasts within their order, they are still revered by their fellow sisters as they are ultimately pilgrims seeking absolution. In battle, they wield the Eviscerator, an obscenely large chainsword, more than capable of gutting Valsinor's beasts or carving through armoured bulkheads. They are overseen and driven onwards towards battle by the Repentious Superior, lest they should falter in their absolute dedication to the cause. So let's see what these girls can do when they're flung into the enemy lines. In battle, both the Sisters Repentia and the Repentia Superior are elite's choices for Codex Adeptus Auroritus. We'll start with a look at the Sisters Repentia first, and these are a 4 model squad, bought at 13 points per model, and you have the option to include up to 5 more sisters for a 9 woman squad. For this investment, you get a fairly meagre profile to be honest, a movement of 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 3+, strength and toughness of 3, 1 wound, 2 attacks, leadership 8 and a 7 plus save. But of course, as Sisters of Battle, they do get the Shield of Faith special rule for that 6 plus invul save, which can be increased, and they also have a 5 plus feel no pain type rule, when they lose a wound you roll the dice, and on a 5 plus that wound is not lost. That's their solace and anguish rule. Despite both of these, they're still pretty fragile on the battlefield, only being toughness 3, and with mediocre saves at best, so they're very much a glass hammer type unit. Each Sister Repentia is armed with an Eviscerator, which is essentially a Power Fist but with damage flat 2, rather than damage d3. So each one of these girls is typically hitting with 2 strength 6 attacks per turn. They have the Zealot special rule, meaning that if they either charged, were charged, or made a heroic intervention, they get to re-roll their hit rolls, which means they're actually hitting 3 quarters of the time in normal circumstances. For a big 9 woman squad, this will work out an average of 13 strength 6 hits, if there's no other buffs about. If they're charging into something that they really want to get into grips with, such as Primaris Intercessors, which their eviscerators are pretty much tailor-made to take out efficiently, then you'll kill on average 7 or 8 of them. So despite being quite fragile, they pack a really big offensive punch. Even against vehicles, things that they're wounding on 5s, they will do on average 7 or 8 wounds too, if they don't have any invul saves. Basically, whatever you throw these girls at, they're going to make a mess. They have a couple of additional special rules. They get Acts of Faith, could be particularly handy for a charge roll perhaps. They have Sacred Rites, if you have a pure Sisters of Battle army. In particular, both the Passion and Hand of the Emperor could be very handy for them. Hand of the Emperor giving them plus one to advance and charge, and the Passion giving them extra hits on sixes, which as they only hit on fours, is actually a really big damage buff, giving them essentially a 33% damage increase, making it more like 10 wounds on a standard vehicle if you have the full squad. Finally, the last rule that we haven't talked about is their Martyrdom Special Rule, which means if the unit is destroyed in any other phase but the Morale phase, then you gain an additional Miracle Dice, which doesn't hurt as a consolation prize for losing the unit, I suppose. So, reasonably slow, reasonably fragile, but very murderous squad of assault-based infantry here. Let's take a look at the Repentia Superior now to see what buffs she can give these girls. The Repentia Superior is a 35-point model, armed with both Neural Whips and Frag and Crack Grenades. As we said, she's also an Elite's choice, though she doesn't fill up a detachment slot in any army that includes Sister Repentia units. So typically, she is taken as an extra, you don't get to fill any detachment slots with her even if you want to. She's got a typical Sisters buffing HQ type profile, movement of 6, weapon skill and ballistic skill 3+, strength and toughness 3, 4 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8 and a 3+, save. For her own fighting prowess, the Neural Whips are a melee weapon with AP-2 and damage 1, and it's got an interesting rule where if you're making attacks against a non-vehicle, if the unit has a leadership of 7 or lower, then you get to add 1 to the wound roll as well. It's not much, she's not ever going to be a massive fighty character in herself, but I guess it's something. Her main rule that you'd actually take her for is the Driven Onward special rule, which is basically how she buffs Sisters Repentia in two different ways. Firstly, they can re-roll any advance and charge rolls made for them when they're within 6 inches of her, and if they don't make it into close combat in the first place, then they don't do any damage, so this is great for a bit of extra reliability. 
but she also increases their damage output as well, allowing them to re-roll wound rolls of 1 for attacks made with by melee weapons and friendly sister repenture units when their units are within 6 inches of the model. So, a small but reasonable damage increase, and another factor that can really propel them into doing an obscene amount of damage, as well as making their charges far more reliable, so she's a very reasonable cheap little buffing character if you are taking a big squad of repenture. So let's talk a little bit more about how we can get more out of them on the tabletop with any obvious buffs and synergies for the Repenture that we can see. First of all is our choice of order, and frankly for close combat sisters, the Bloody Rose just trumps all the rest. Bloody Rose models get plus 1 AP to the unit's weapons, so AP minus 4 on those eviscerators, meaning they'll be ploughing straight through power armour with no resistance, and also they get plus 1 attack on any turn where they charge, were charged, or made a heroic intervention. This stacks absolutely beautifully with the Zealot special rule, meaning that each Bloody Rose Sister Repenture will be hitting with 3 AP-4 attacks and be rolling all hit rolls any turn she makes a charge. If we're mathing this out to a big unit of 9, and say we had a Repenture Superior in tow as well, we'd now be doing something like an average of 15 or 16 wounds to a typical vehicle in close combat on the turn they make the charge. This is getting out to be a very crazy amount of damage output for and just over 100 points worth of models, plus a cheap buffing character. Sure, they're certainly fragile, but if they do make the charge, they're going to be leaving a mark. As for the other orders, some are useful, some are a bit rubbish. Interestingly, Valorous Heart is pretty much no use to these girls whatsoever, as they don't care about AP, and they already have a better feel no pain type save. Our Martyred Lady, however, could be very useful, because if they've taken any casualties in the squad, then they'll be hitting with plus 1 to hit, which means that when combined with Zealot, that'll be hitting 8 out of 9 times for every attack that they get. Very scary indeed. I guess Sacred Rose could also potentially be interesting, cutting down on morale casualties, but overall for orders, Bloody Rose is really where it's at for Sister's Repenture. In terms of buffing characters, some can be very handy. Interestingly, the Cannoness isn't that handy, because they're typically going to have re-rolls anyway from their own Zealot rule, so the re-rolls of 1 aren't that big a deal. However, a Cannoness with the Warlord trait that allows plus 1 to invul saves is very useful for the Sisters Repenture. If you can boost that Shield of Faith save to a 4+, plus through that, and maybe Celestine or someone else, then you've actually got a semi-durable unit on your hands that will be fairly resistant to heavy weapons, though it will still fall apart fairly easily to any sort of mass cheap fire. Repenture are also one of the units that could potentially get some benefits from the Triumph of St. Catherine, in particular the plus one to hit for nearby units in close combat, as we already mentioned, are exactly what the Repenture needs. I do expect it to be very difficult to both get the Triumph of St. Catherine in a decent spot, and also near to Repenture, who are making a charge from safety somewhere, but if it does happen, then the results will be pretty glorious. Juni Therita can also be a pretty decent buff to Order of Our Martyred Lady, Sister's Repenture. She can do the job of the Repenture Superior, re-rolling ones to wound, and also give them plus one to their invul save. Missionaries and Priests are absolutely amazing for them, giving them an extra attack, further increasing this massive stack of blending attacks that we can get out of them. If you're counting, if we stack that with Bloody Rose and the Sister Repenture themselves, we can now get four attacks out of each sister, and the damage output is getting silly. Finally, the Imagifier can add plus one to the strength characteristic of nearby sisters units, making the Repenture strength eight in close combat, because plus one modifiers happen before you multiply the damage in 40k, meaning that they're strength eight, which is a real break point for threatening a lot of things like big heavy vehicles. If we do the fun numbers again, and now if we have our 9 woman Repenture squad using Bloody Rose with an Imagifier and Priest in tow, then we now do 27 wounds on average to a Toughness 8 vehicle with no invul. So basically these girls with two cheap support characters, one round an Imperial Knight. Absolutely crazy. This really is a unit when you can stack a lot of character buffs and have absolutely big meaningful effects on their damage output. As these girls are so fragile, buying a transport is one of the few cases in 40k where it really, really makes sense for them. I typically recommend fielding a big squad of these girls in a rhino, as it's cheap, durable, and also fairly fast, so you could potentially get it into the midfield turn 1 to be a threat that the opponent really can't ignore. And if you are in assault range from this battle bunker, you could potentially get them out, and then charge the rhino into your target first to soak up any problematic overwatch. I would absolutely take these girls in a transport. If we move on to Stratagems next, the Sister Repenture have one of their own, which is Desperate for Redemption. This is the Fight Against Stratagem for 3 command points, so provided you've declared enough different targets of your charge, once you've murdered the first target, for 3 command points you can move on to murder the next. Again, the theoretical maximum for this is absolutely huge. In theory, if you're positioned incredibly well or are very lucky, it's well within the realms of possibility to one round 2 Imperial Knights. 
Other than this big one, there are a few more handy ones for the Repentia. Final Redemption is another one that's Repentia unique, and can be a good one when you know that your Repentia squad is just about to get wiped out. For every sister Repentia that's slain in close combat that phase, you roll a dice and on a 4+, plus, that unit takes one mortal wound. In theory, if you're having an entire big squad wiped, then this could be a 4 mortal wound bonus, so it can be another little positive when they do go down. You just have to remember to see this coming, because you have to do this before they start to die, not after. Another really handy one for getting a mighty assault unit where they need to go is Holy Rage. This is the one that allows advance and charge, so if there's a key enemy target that absolutely needs to get cut down and it's just a bit too far from the Repenture, they can use this to potentially get themselves an unobtainable charge otherwise, or even just make their risky charge into a lot more of a sure thing. So the Repenture are clearly very powerful when they get into the right circumstances. But how do we go about orchestrating that in-game? Firstly, I'd certainly include these girls in a transport, preferably a rhino, although an immolator or repressor could also do. I'd hope to have characters on the board that can support their already decent damage output, basically a priest, a magifier, and the repentious superior. I know these three characters do cost almost as much as the unit themselves, but they well over double the damage output, and the superior will make their charges more reliable, so I think they are probably worth it. To make the most out of this investment in buffing characters, you could easily include multiple rhinos full of repentia, and then hopefully try and position it so the buffing characters can help each one each turn it charges. Or even maybe combine it with other powerful sisters melee units, say Zephyrin for example. I think there are two main ways that you can use repentia, either to actively go hunting down the enemy and charging those rhinos up there to make a threat that they can't ignore, or they can potentially use them as a more counter-offensive sort of role. With a rhino full of these chainsaw-wielding girls, placed somewhere moderately threatening within your battle line, meaning that your opponent knows that if they put any valuable units too close to them, they're going to get hacked apart with enormous chainsaws. I typically not want to get the repentia out until they can actually make a charge, just because they're so hideously fragile to massed anti-infantry shooting, and being such a dangerous unit, they'll probably attract a lot of attention quite early. When they are about to make a charge, you really need to think about denying Overwatch, because you could easily lose a lot of these girls to decent Overwatch which would be a big shame not to get the most out of them. So as we mentioned before, I'd either think about charging the rhinos in if you have the chance, or maybe even nearby battle sister squads that aren't as valuable to soak some bullets, or if you can, maybe think about charging from out of line of sight at the bottom of some ground floor ruins or something. With such a massive damage output, these girls would ideally want to be declaring charges on as many things as they possibly could, just in case they roll really high and do an enormous amount of damage to multiple units. You would just basically have to weigh this up against the amount of overwatch damage they're about to take, and whether or not that trade-off's actually going to be worth it, so you might have to decide on a more case-by-case -case basis. Once they have got stuck into the enemy in melee, certainly remember their two powerful stratagems, the first if they're going to have a chance to fight again and wipe out a bunch more enemy units, the second if your opponent thinks about countercharging them, or they've chomped into something that is going to cut them down, you may as well get a bunch of extra mortal wounds out of it if you are about to have a squad wiped. Overall, I think the Repentia are certainly a very strong unit in the Sister Battle Army. It's hard not to be a competitive unit when your damage can spike just that high if you can manage to get them into close combat. I certainly think they're going to be making a splash, and I'll be interested to see if they make any big impacts in tournaments over the year to come. Thanks very much for listening to another All Specs Tactics video. If you've been enjoying the Sisters of Battle content, I'm sure we'll be looking at Retributors and the Seraphim at some point in the future, so feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see those. If you'd like to support the channel, I do have a Patreon page, which is what allows me to keep on going with these videos, rather than dedicating more time to my actual real-world job. There's also access to some other things, such as early videos, opinion polls on what videos you'd like to see next, and the occasional prize draw giveaway. So if any of that is interesting, or you'd just like to help out the channel, then please take a look at the link below. In any case, a big thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.